All right, Psalm 105, verses 1 through 7 says this. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all of his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that he has done, his miracles and his judgments he uttered. O oh, offspring of Abraham, his servant, children of Jacob, his chosen one. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all of the earth. Uh, this week we celebrate uh, Thanksgiving. And if you open up your Bible, especially through the book of Psalms, but really the entire Bible, uh, throughout the entire Bible you see calls for us to give thanks uh, to God. This week we're celebrating the actual uh, holiday of Thanksgiving. And I'm going to be honest, it's one of my two uh, favorite holidays. You know, uh, y'all know uh, that my, my all-time most favorite uh, holiday is not Christmas, it's not Easter, it's Halloween. Uh, that is my favorite holiday because I love cookie, I love candy. Candy's my favorite thing in the world, so you get a lot of that on Halloween, so that's my favorite. Uh, but Thanksgiving is a, a close second because you get food and football. So it's like it's like the three greatest things, candy, food, and football. You know, you got Thanksgiving and, and Halloween, so it's awesome. Uh, but turkey and stuffing and mashed potatoes and gravy. Um, ah, goodness gracious. Uh, cr uh, cranberries? No, I'm just kidding. Who likes cranberries? Let's be honest. Who likes the cranberries? You like, no, nah, okay, let me back it up. Who likes the cranberries that you open the can and it slides out and makes this sound as it comes out? Y'all are weird people, man. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> All of you people who just raised your hand, how many of y'all actually open it up and hear that <laughs> sound as it's coming out and you still eat it? Okay. The sound alone, it can be the greatest stuff in the world, but just that sound, I'm like, I'm out. So anyway, anyway. Uh, but, but I love food. I love Thanksgiving food. Uh, you know, turkey's great. That's good for you. Uh, it's the only thing that'll be on the table that's good for you is the turkey. Everything else is bad for you. Uh, I've lost a lot of weight this year. I'm going to gain it all back on Thursday. That's my goal. Um, I'll start 2020, um, you know, even where I was last time. Uh, but in all seriousness, in all seriousness, uh, Thanksgiving is a day uh, where we stop and, and give thanks. We stop and we say thank you for everything uh, that we have. We're thankful for, for family. We're thankful for friends. We're thankful for the things that we have. Uh, when I stop and think about Thanksgiving and when I was going through uh, uh, working on this sermon, I got to thinking, for those who don't have faith, those who don't have God, those who don't know Jesus, who are they thankful to? I wonder what it's like to have no faith. I grew up in the church, grew up in a Christian home, went to a Christian school. Um, I've always been thankful to God. But if you, if you don't believe in God, who are you thankful to? Because let's be honest, if you're thankful for something, you have to be thankful to someone. Let's just be honest. If, if we go home this evening and Brooke makes a wonderful dinner, which she always does, she's a great cook, uh, and I'm thankful for that dinner, I'm going to be thankful to her for making that wonderful dinner. Uh, when, when I'm thankful for the music that was played her, earlier, I'm, I'm thankful to Liv and Liz uh, and Hannah for, for doing that. And it's great. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful to those people. So for those who stop on this one day of year, uh, this one day of the year, and they're thankful, who are they thankful to? You know, with us being uh, Christians, I know that's a strange way to start off a Thanksgiving sermon, but for those of us who are Christians and those of us who follow Christ and those of us who know God, we know who we are thankful to. We know uh, to whom we are giving our thanks. We are grateful for what we have and for everything that we are able to do. Because we understand that everything that we have is from him. Uh, scripture says that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, from the Father. Everything that we have is from God. Uh, last week in our, in our teaching time, we talked about uh, contentment at, at length. Being content uh, with the lot that God has given you. Being content uh, with what we have. Uh, and you cannot have thanksgiving without contentment. Uh, but this morning, I want us to understand and to consider that in order to be thankful uh, to God in the season of thanksgiving, we have to understand that every single thing that we have comes Comes from him. What you have did not come from you. What you have earned did not come from you. What you worked so hard to make so much money to buy something did not come from you. It came from God. Now, I know this is a difficult concept for us to grasp. It's a dis difficult concept for beings such as humans who are selfish and prideful beings. It's, it's hard for us to grasp. It's hard for us to understand. We work for that. We got paid for that money. We you know, did overtime. We did all this stuff. We worked for it. We bought it. It's for me. And for the most part, you know, that can, that can be true. But it is God that gave you the ability and the knowledge and the talent and the wherewithal to do what you do. 
It was God that gave you the opportunity to be in the job that you're in. It's God that divinely placed you uh, in the place where you are to be doing what you are doing. It's not on your own accord or by your own doing. It is from God. It is God that allowed you to be born in a place where jobs are plentiful and the majority of people that live in this country have homes uh, and food on the table. That's not on you. God provided that. So in order for us to take a moment and stop and be thankful for what we have, we have to realize that we didn't do it. We have to realize that everything that we have in our lives did not come from us. It came from God, straight from God. We need to get past the pride and the arrogance that us little human beings like to pick up and prance around with. God gave us everything that we need, and as a result, we must approach him with humility and thankfulness. God gave us the food we eat. God gave us the clothes that we wear, the houses that we live in that are fully equipped with running clean water and electricity. The cars that we drive, the people that we know, our spouses, our, our children, our grandmas, grandpas, moms and dads, aunts and uncles, and all the other people that we'll see on Thursday. The jobs that we have, the co-workers that we have, the church family that we have. So in order for us to be thankful, we need to realize that every single thing that we have comes from God. So with that in mind, we can take stock of everything that we have from the big and great things like the homes that we live in and the cars that we drive all the way down to the small things like the fact that we have access to coffee. Take stock and give God all of that glory. But there's so much more to be to, to be thankful to God for than just our material possessions. There's also so many things that God has done for us on, on a personal uh, basis. You know, God has created this awesome earth uh, for us to live on. He's created this awesome planet that's just full and beautiful. You know, when God was, was creating uh, this place for us to live on, it could have been like the most drab and dreary place in the world. It could have just been gray uh, ground and gray skies, and that's it. You know, it could have been just the most basic thing, but God made this, uh, this world full of beauty and majesty, a world that cries out the glory of God. And so much more on a personal level, uh, we have things to be thankful for. Scripture is vast and detailed when it comes to everything that God has done for us. God has loved us. God has sustained us. God has upheld us and strengthened us. He gives us peace. He gave us the scriptures. He made a way for us to get through temptation. He filled us with laughter and joy. God is our refuge. God is our comforter. God is our healer, our provider, our shield, our portion, our rock. God is there for his people, and for that we must be thankful. You know, so many times we get caught up in the everyday aspect of life. We get caught up in the rat race of trying to get the kids to where they need to be. You're trying to get dinner on the table. trying to get out the door in time to beat the traffic, to get to work on time. That we stop and we, we forget this stuff. We just go on with the day and we forget all of these things. We forget everything that God has done for us. Every little thing. We need to stop and reflect on what God has done. And we must be thankful. The scripture is filled with psalms and commands for us to be thankful. This is from Psalm 95. It says, oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with psalms of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the heights of the mountains are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands full of the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Everything is God, God's, and as a result, we are thankful. Look at Psalm 100. It says, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Just look at that passage. Look at that psalm. That is the greatest thing. Enter his courts with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. The Psalms are, are so full of places that talk about giving thanks to God. 
It's not the only place. Uh, the Apostle Paul talks about thankfulness a good deal in his letters. This is what he wrote to the church in Thessalonica. He says, Rejoice always, always pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus in you. He says, look, giving thanks to God is God's will for you. Because when we give thanks to God, we bring glory and honor to him. And that is the will of God for all of us. God is worthy of our thanksgiving and praise. We are thankful for what we have, for the big and the small. We are thankful for creation and everything that God has done for us. We are thankful for those things. We're thankful for what God has given us, for the things he's blessed us with, the material stuff. We're thankful that he is our sustainer. We're thankful that he is our rock. Uh, but just like John said during communion, there's one thing that is far and away the thing that we should be most thankful for, and that's obviously Jesus. The number one thing that we must be thankful for is the sacrifice of Christ and the great grace of God. We serve a God. We serve a being who is all-powerful, all-knowing, uh, can be anywhere, omnipresent, who is the most powerful being ever, who created the universe and everything in it just by speaking the words. We serve that God, and it's a God who loves us so much that he couldn't stand to spend eternity without us. A God who loves us so much that he couldn't just stand by and let us be dead in our sin. A God who loves us so much that even though we deserve eternal death in hell, that he sent his son to this earth all for the purpose of taking the nails on the cross. All for the purpose of dying so we could be redeemed. We have been saved, we have been pardoned, and we are free from the curse of sin and death. There is nothing greater in this world for us to be thankful for. We could be homeless with no food, no car, no clothes. God could do nothing else for us other than this one thing, and we should be the most thankful beings in the world. So I want to challenge you to three things uh, this morning and, and, and through this whole week uh, as we celebrate Thanksgiving. Three things that I want you to take away. Number one, do not be thankful just this one day a year. Don't be thankful just this one day a year or, or, or just this week. Remember the things that we have spent uh, talking about for the last few minutes. Remember that everything that, that you have comes from God. Remember the things that God has done for you, being your provider, your sustainer, your comfort, and your rock. Remember those things every single day. And live a life of thanksgiving, uh, giving him the praise and the honor and the glory for everything that you have. Number two of this challenge is I want you to share with someone this week what God has done for you. On Thursday, we're going to be with family, a lot of family, a lot of family. You're going to see a lot of people that we don't see uh, every single day. Share with someone what God has done for you and why you are thankful. Share with someone in a ball game this week uh, during halftime or during a timeout what God has done for you. Share with someone while you're at the coffee shop. Share with someone while you're standing in line at Target on Black Friday. Y'all know how it is. It's wrapped all the way around the building. I'm down every aisle. You've got hours to sit and talk to the person in front of you or behind you. So I'm going to tell you what I'm thankful for this year. I'm thankful that God sent his son to die for me. When we study and contemplate the topic of Thanksgiving, and we read the Psalms of Thanksgiving, um, something really stands out. When we open this up and, and when we search, uh, like if you do a Google search on Thanksgiving and you look at these passages, um, something really starts to stand out. And there's a command uh, to sing when we go through worship, when we go through Thanksgiving. Uh, Psalm 100 that we read earlier says, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, come into his presence with singing. Psalm 95 says, Let us sing to the Lord and come to him with thanksgiving. Over and over and over again, we see the command in the Bible to sing and to show our thanksgiving through song. Look at uh, Psalm 69. It says, I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. This will please the Lord more than an ox or a bull with horns and hooves. When we humble and see, it, 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 they will be glad. You who seek God, let your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the needy and does not despise his own people who are prisoners. Let heaven and earth praise him. The seas and everything in it that moves him. 
So the third thing that I want to challenge you to this morning, the first one was to, to be thankful throughout the whole year, not just one day. The second thing is to share uh, with someone what you're thankful for and, 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 and how God, what, everything that God has done for you. And the third thing is that for the next few moments, we're going to sing some songs. And I encourage you and I challenge you to lift his name high, to praise him and to give him thanks through song. In all times, in all circumstances, we sing praise and we're thankful. So worship the God that gave you everything. Worship the God who gave you the house you're living in, the car you're driving, your spouse, your children and everything. Worship the God who is your sustainer, your strength, your shield, your portion and everything else that you need. And worship the God who sent his own son to come to this earth and die on a cross for you. I challenge you to worship him with everything you've got. Watch this video. I'll stay in worship with this.